Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownson for Planet 5D, and we're here at Valley Forge National Park at the Valley Forge Signal Seekers Radio Control Club Airfield to test the DJI Phantom 3 Professional with 4K camera and the base version of 3DR's Solo. No gimbal, but designed for a GoPro, and today we'll be using a Hero 3 Plus Black. So let's check it out. It was the 3DR Solo that I saw at NAB 2015 that really got me motivated to explore drone or quadcopter videography. The smart shots really intrigued me, hooked me, and made me think that maybe I could do this. And on our maiden voyage, wow, it was great. I did it. Suitably fortified by my experience with the Solo, I took out the Phantom 3 Professional with 4K camera. And this time you can see I was getting a little bit more aggressive. Oh yeah, I can speed this puppy up, out, back, and down. And you know what? I could even land it on my own. I went back another day because I only had one battery for each of them and needed to give them three hours to charge and started with the solo and the smart shots. Now I made one of many mistakes on this particular day because I did not realize that the only way that the downlink works reliably is at 1080 60 frames per second medium field of view. So in these shots right here with the selfie in the orbit, I'm flying blind. I actually don't have an image showing up on the screen. And on the one hand, you can say, doesn't matter because look what they did. On the other hand, I couldn't see that we weren't in the frame. And because there's no gimbal, it's actually quite jittery. And I couldn't adjust if I had seen the image uh, to get what I want. So for me, a couple of things that became immediately clear. You really do need a gimbal, uh, not just the plain solo, but the solo with gimbal. That's $13.99 versus $9.99, uh, but it's, it's a necessity in my book. Still, with that being said, what a rush to look at this footage after the fact and say, wow, this looks so cool. I love the wide field of view. And look at this, by the second time out, I'm already landing this thing on my own. I'm not just pushing a button that says land. So pretty great, really excited. Now I really wanted to take the Phantom out. And by now I was beginning to get excited at the thought of actually trying to tell a little bit of a story, a very little story. In this case, uh, the Valley Forge signal seekers are getting ready to send out a couple of planes and do acrobatics. And I mean, this is just pretty amazing. There is no smart shot equivalent on the Phantom. So I'm just doing this uh, myself and it's just smooth as glass. And of course it helps to be able to see. Still, I'm making beginner's mistakes, but I'm gonna call this being prudent rather than making a mistake per se because I was going to film several aircraft in the sky in the same vicinity of this loner unit, and I did not want to cause a mid-air collision. So all in all, really astounding, really, really excited by this stuff. And what you can see here is the difference that a gimbal makes. Uh, and you can also see that I was getting a little bit braver, was willing to get a little bit closer, uh, Man, these guys know how to fly. It's incredible what they can do. It's, uh, wow, I really got a kick out of it. Of course, I'm still too far away. This is not great cinema by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but again, for someone who has never flown a quadcopter before, never flown any kind of remote control aircraft, never even done an RC car in the driveway, 
this was really, really exciting. Of course, the other thing is that when you've got 4K and you conform it to 1080p, uh, the primary benefit reduces dramatically. But still, you know, this is really beautiful footage. And personally, I think uh, 4K conformed down to 1080p from the uh, DJI Phantom camera is uh, better than the GoPro Hero 3 Plus running at 1080. Your mileage may vary. So at this point, I just begin to explore. You know, I've got the planes going in one direction, the camera's going in another. Again, it's not great, but this is on my second battery charge which is really quite spectacular. Uh, I was really intrigued by the idea of using the follow capability of the Solo and actually putting like a watch or something in one of these cockpits, but no such luck. Still here with the Phantom, you see that it can double as a dolly, as a slider, as a techno crane, really incredible. After spending about 45 minutes in the air with each of these birds, I find myself wanting to use a Mac PC or Android Apple analogy. Neither one really quite works. Now, on the one hand, of course, the Solo has been designed from the ground up as the quadcopter for the rest of us, a tool which shields us from complexity so that we can unleash our inner creativity just like Apple. And just like Apple, to my eye, it has a more compelling industrial design and a cleaner user interface, not only in terms of the app GUI, but in terms of smart shots and actually the controller itself. But it's the Phantom, which has a more tightly integrated vehicle camera and vision positioning system. And therefore, it's DJI, which is better positioned to optimize end to end, just like Apple. 3DR by contrast, it's a little bit more like Microsoft in that it uses a hardware partner, GoPro in this case for the camera, and like Android, uses open source software and has a relatively open architecture. Although if you ask me what's sitting inside the DJI in terms of software, I have no idea. The bottom line is that the 3DR Solo doesn't seem quite as clean in handoffs component to component yet. Now, the fact of the matter is I was motivated by and predisposed uh, toward the solo for this comparison because when you're a one-man band, it's already enough. Your head's already going to explode without having to learn another skill set so different from photography, uh, UAV operations, and worry about getting the shot at the same time. Smart shots really hooked me. And yet it quickly became clear that I could evolve past smart shots. Although, to be fair, of course, the solo has advanced flight modes. And the uh, drift mode in particular looks interesting to videographers. Now, as far as superior image capture, yes, the Phantom 3 did that because it has a 4K camera and a gimbal that the Solo did not have in this particular loner. But even when I take that into account, it seems to me that the Phantom 3 is just a little bit more stable in the air and a little bit more sorted when it comes to image capture. Now, as far as stability is concerned, I don't know if it's the vision positioning system, access to the GLONASS Russian satellites. I'm not even sure that I'm right. When it comes to image capture, the fact of the matter is that you can only get an operable downlink when this is running at 1080, 60 frames per second medium. The connection between the camera and the vehicle is micro HDMI, which leaves me a little bit queasy, although there were no problems with this in the short time that I had it. And the reliability of camera, GUI, camera controls seemed a little more robust in the Phantom. Uh, then again, with the preponderance of viewing going to mobile platforms sometime in 2016, who really cares about 4K versus 1080p? Can you really see the difference on a smartphone? And even if you could see it, are you going to take up the bandwidth for 4K? And when it comes to cameras and gimbals, well, gimbals are pretty much gimbals and cameras, well, we're shooting wide angle, deep depth of field. I don't expect to see much difference in either case. It's probably easiest to sum it up by saying this. Each manufacturer comes to this market from a different position of strength, but they will inevitably meet in the middle in terms of function, ease of use, and price. Competition is a beautiful thing, and 3DR's arrival is really exciting because they're forcing DJI to up its game. I really want these guys to succeed. 
But you have to say that you get stellar results from either one of these guys. And frankly, I'm amazed at how quickly I could get anything out of these cams so quickly after I opened the box. Oh yeah, when you first start flying, you really should have a wide open field with very few people around. And I'm not saying any more about that. If it were me, right now, I'd probably get the device you're looking at right here, the Phantom 3, professional, with 4K camera and 3-axis gimbal. Unless I opted for the just-announced Phantom 3 standard with 2.7K camera and 3-axis gimbal, which is a lot less expensive. Unless, of course, someone were to give me a solo with three-axis gimbal for my upcoming birthday. That would be really nice. Anyway, for Planet 5D, I'm Hugh Roundstone. See you next time. That's it. I'm done.